everyday surplus food from non-residential businesses like restaurants and fast food places ends up in the garbage, adding to the province's food waste problem. Well, one Toronto man is hoping to tackle the issue locally. He's teamed up with food retailer Pantry, taking their food that would have otherwise been tossed and giving it to those who need it most. Tony Colley knows what it's like to be unsure about where your next meal is coming from. The 47-year-old entrepreneur went through a period of food insecurity. It was when he started working for a catering company that he saw an opportunity to help those in similar circumstances. And on my first event, I started rescuing food because I saw the surplus. It was there and I knew that shelters would be able to receive this food. That idea turned into a pilot project called B1 to Give. I began to research food waste, food insecurity, and learned what food retailers were doing with their surplus food. And I realized there was a gap in the marketplace that nobody was really dealing with food retailers of this sort when it came to their surplus food waste at the end of the day. How does it work? So what we do is we offer retailers three programs, A, B, or C. Program A includes 30 pickups, program B is 20 pickups, and program C is 10 pickups. The pricing model is $10, $20, or $50 per pickup. His first client is Pantry, a business that grew out of the original catering company for which Kali worked. This is an actual extra cost for the business to do this. Why do it at all? It's not a cost that uh, we're uninterested in paying. We'd love to continue this process and encourage all businesses like ours to use Tony and be one to give for all of their surplus of food. There are organizations dedicated to food rescue. Second Harvest is the largest in Canada, rescuing millions of pounds of foods every year to give to social service organizations. But Kali says his business is different, acting more like an Uber service with immediate delivery from retailer to shelter. Dixon Hall is one of them. What Tony's done is identified just a different a niche group source for the food, right? So the restaurants, the catering businesses. Um, so it's always exciting to see people who are paying attention and people who are thinking of others while doing so. Ahead on City News, just how critical is the food waste problem in Ontario? We speak to one expert who reveals the alarming numbers and how the provincial government can step in to prevent more food from ending up in our landfills. It's a two million ton problem in Ontario. Prepared food being needlessly wasted, much of it ending up in our landfill. Earlier we showed you how one Toronto man is tackling the problem locally, but experts say more needs to be done, calling food waste a crisis in our country. About one third of the total amount of garbage and waste that we produce in Ontario is food and organic waste. That totals about four million tons per year. To put in perspective, four million tons of food waste, that would fill the Rogers Centre Stadium about five times if you close the cover. Chopowick estimates that about half of that is prepared food. Overall, just 25% of food waste in Ontario is properly composted, a figure Chopowick says needs to change. We're sending a lot of food waste to landfill, and in Ontario we're running out of landfill space. And as well, uh, when we take food waste and divert it from landfill and send it to a compost facility, number one, we're creating uh, uh, soil and compost and nutrients for the agriculture sector, and also there's the potential to create biogas and renewable natural gas from the uh, composting of food waste too, so we can reduce fossil fuel emissions. There are in other places examples of legislation that have banned food waste. Can we do that in Ontario? Well, it's our understanding the, the Ontario government has said they're going to introduce a proposal uh, to implement some sort of disposal ban on food waste, and we think that's a worthy discussion to have. Second Harvest recently commissioned a study examining the impact of food waste in Canada. The organization behind the study, Value Change Management International, calls it the first study of its kind in the world to examine food loss and waste. Its CEO says banning organics to landfill could be a good place to start. It's too cheap at the moment to send organics to landfill. If you ban it, you force people to look at innovative approaches. But there is a younger generation already looking at what can be done about the issue. Grade 12 student Sydney Johnson did an entire project on food waste after discovering that businesses in Durham and Toronto aren't mandated to compost. She even wrote into us at City News with concern about the problem. What does this make you want to do now? Um, it makes me want to tell the government like there needs to be a change, like it should be mandatory for businesses to have recycling and if they're food related to have a compost. Um, it is very costly, but it, the food shouldn't be ending up in landfills. Chopwick says even if legislation was passed putting a disposal ban on food waste, it could take up to five years to fully implement and even then it would be a challenge to enforce.